How you doing, guys? Good. You believing? Huh? Are you believing today? Yeah. Trusting in God? Every day. Every day? Why do I not believe you? There's always someone up there. Do you remember George? Why do I not believe him? Do you remember him? Huh? Do you remember George? I don't know, do I? Should I? Yeah. He's going to the damnation about, isn't he? He's what? He's going to the damnation about. Oh, <laughs> well, we hope not. We hope not. <laughs> Still time to repent, George, and uh, believe the gospel. That's what's required. Copy of God's word, maybe that would do the trick. You know, it's uh, very useful for, uh, you know, clearing the, the mind. Uh, no, I'm all right. I don't really believe in Jesus. But you need to. You need to. You're like George, you're on your way to damnation, man. Yes, damnation. There you go, you see. They know where they're going. But that's not where you need to go. It's glory. Christ in you the hope of glory. Yeah. The glory of heaven, that is. Not the damnation of hell. These young folk, you know, they just, they joke about these things. And, you know, it's, uh, it's serious. It's very serious. You know, it's uh, heaven or hell. It's, uh, it's your soul. It's your eternal destiny. There's another one, look, yeah? Get serious, young people. Serious. Well, like I was saying, the love of God offered again. Free of charge, no cost, no obligation to you. Your stake and do with as you will. It has the ability that nothing else has, and that is to make a person wise, very wise. The wisdom of God that leads to salvation, away from the damnation of hell, as the young man calls it, to the glory of heaven. So you'd like to have a copy of God's word? It's offered to you freely, without charge, cost, or obligation to you. Yours take and do with as you will. You want one, come and ask us for one. Gladly place one into your hands. As I was saying just a few moments ago, uh, quoting uh, from the Bible itself, Colossians, New Testament, chapter 1, verse 27. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, not Christ in the manger, not Christ in the Bible, not Christ in the church, but Christ in you is the hope of glory. For anyone who has a hope, and you know, it's surprising, you know, when you get talking to people. Um, and I'm talking about, you know, those that maybe go by sneering, maybe a word of mockery to a friend, you know. Uh, you know, they, they're painfully, obviously, unbelieving at one moment, but then you get into personal conversation with them, and you ask them, you know, concerning, you know, what's going to happen to them when they cock their toes up and go out of this world? Where are you going to go? Well, heaven, heaven. <laughs> even the atheists, even the atheists. They call themselves atheists, but they're expecting to go to heaven. Hi guys, how you doing? You expect to go to heaven, you know? Well, listen, friends. Christ in you is the hope of glory. You reject Christ. You haven't got Christ in you. You've got no hope of glory. All you've got is the hope of hell. And that's no hope at all. Huh? That's no hope at all. But here you are, you know. You're a bunch of people. You know, you've got no heed for God's word. No care for it. You won't listen. You won't be entreated. You know. And, and you go by week after week after week. You reject the offers and the overtures of God's love. And yet you expect, when you breathe your last, you expect to be approved of and accepted by God into the glory of heaven. Well, friends, uh, you've got to get real about that. I mean, if you really mean it, if you really expect that, then you've really, really got to get serious about it. Because you've got to get Christ in you. 
Because Christ in you is the hope of glory. Not Christ in the Bible, not Christ in the church, not Christ in the manger, not Christ in the cross, but Christ in you is the only hope of glory. Without him, without him. You see, he was born. You know, as the Christmas song says, Christ was born that he might be born in you that you might get Christ into you. And how does a person get Christ into them? And why do they need Christ in them? Well, because you got sin in you. And you got to get the sin out of you in order to get Christ into you. The sin's got to be dealt with, you know? Christ in you is the hope of glory. That is Christ living in you by his Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us quite clearly God exists, one God, three persons, distinct persons, all of them God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Father sent his Son, Jesus, and gave his Holy Spirit, left the Spirit here on earth until all his work is done. But friends, only, only by Christ being born in you, you being reborn, that is, born again by the Spirit of God, as Jesus puts it. But he was dead. You must. You must, sir. No, that's you, sir. That's you, man. Yeah? God is alive. Amen, Jesus brother. is alive from the dead. Amen, brother. And he is able, believe me, to bring this hope into you. A living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. He's raised. He's alive. The living Savior that you need. Not a dead prophet, not a dead religion, but a living Savior. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. Jesus is alive. But is he alive in you? Christ in you is the hope of glory the gift of God, the Son of God, the Father, so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. But this is the condemnation, self-condemnation that you have not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Father sent the Son that the Son might be born in you. He who was born of a woman, born under the law, paid the penalty of the law, obedient even to the point of death, dying the death that you should have died, and rose again from the dead in order that he might be, you might be reborn, and that he might be born in you and give to you the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. And all by the power, the might, the almighty power of God's Holy Spirit, circumcising your heart, changing your nature, you see. You're born in sin, and unless Christ is born in you, you remain. You remain in the state in which you're conceived, the state condition in which you're born, that's in sin. And unless sin is taken out of you, burned out of you, you'll burn in your sin. Christ in you is the hope of glory, not sin in you. Oh, you revel in and joke and laugh about your sin. You treat it as such a light matter. It's a source of entertainment for you in this day and generation, is it not? These are the things that you relish before your internet and television screen. It's all a joke to you. Adultery, fornication, illegitimate children. It's all just a, a laughing matter to you. Sin in you will lead you, believe me, to 
as George says, the damnation of hell. That's the destiny, that's the end. That's the final consequence of sin in you unless you get Christ in you. He's the hope of glory and he's the only hope of glory. But he came and he lived and loved and died and rose again from the dead in order that this hope might be yours and that Christ might be in you, taking the sinner out of you, changing that sinful nature, that nature in which you were born, and that leads to a sinful practice, a delight and a relishing of sin. Who, whoever did not relish in their sin. What man, what woman is there, I ask you in all the world, natural born, who does not delight in sin, who does not delight in the foolishness, the folly, the madness, the insanity of sin. Because no one, no one ever rejected sin. No one ever hated their sin. No one ever loathed their sin. No one ever desired to get the sin out of them until Christ was born in them. Until they were born again. That's why Jesus says a man must be born again. And until he has been born again, he cannot see, he cannot perceive, understand the kingdom of God. Never mind enter into the kingdom of God by the way of repentance and faith. So you see, friends, that delight, that desire, that's your, that's your natural born state and condition of every man, woman, and child born into this world, except, of course, Jesus himself, born to sin, made in sin, unless Jesus comes, unless he transforms you, unless he changes that sin nature and gives you new desires, a love for God, a hatred for sin, to love what you once hated, God, and the things of God, godliness and holiness, and to love and, and to hate what you ought to hate, your sin, to loathe and despise and to despair of yourself even. Because that's the condition, that's the state in which you're born, natural, comes quite natural to you. How can you are accustomed to doing evil possibly do good, says God? This is an impossibility with you. Take a miracle. But well, that's what Christ in you is. A miracle from God. When Jesus Christ, the Son of God, comes by his Spirit and circumcises a man or woman's heart, changes their heart, gives them a new heart, a new nature, one that delights in holiness, the delights in God and the things of God instead of delighting in sin. But here's the frank thing, friend. Unless that sin's taken out of you, unless it's burned out of you by God, unless that sin's taken away, believe me, it'll take you away. It'll take you out of this world. Why is it that men have to die? The young woman asked the question, a short while back. Why do people have to die, she said, young woman. Well, unaccustomed to death. She said, why do people have to die? Well, because they're sinners, that's why. Because it's sin's wages. That's why you have to die. It's appointed for men once to die. You say you're not a sinner? The only one way you'll prove it don't die. If you never die, then I'll believe you. But if you die like the rest of men and women, then that's the evidence, that's the proof that the Bible is right, God is right, I'm right. My testimony here today is true that you're a wicked sinner before God and that's your wages, that's your comeuppance, that's the, the payback, death. But of course, spiritual death now, separated from God as a result of your iniquities, until that is, Christ is born in you, until that is, you're reborn, given a new nature, your iniquities, your rebellion against God, separates you from God. 
Not geographically. Oh no, he's very, very close to you. Only a breath away. But in wrath, in holy displeasure, in burning fury against you because of your ungodliness and unrighteousness. Your suppression of the truth in unrighteousness. So you see, friends, you see, separated from God, that's called spiritual death in the Bible. And that's what you are, you see, dead men walking without Christ in you. No hope of glory. Dead men walking, spiritually dead, and just waiting for the day when, like everybody else, you cock your toes up and go out of this world. Physical death. The wages of sin is death, you see. That's why people have to die, because they're sinners. It's sin's wages being paid out, but it's just the beginning. It's not, it's not the finish, it's not the end. The end is the lake of fire, not the hope of glory. The end's the everlasting burnings. The end's the gnashing of teeth, lamenting and tormenting for all eternity. That's the end. That's the end of your sin. That's its rule of consequences. That's, uh, that's the wages of sin. Spiritual death, physical death, and then eternal death. And you're exposed to that every moment of your being. Every day. Every day that God gives you breath, that's what you're exposed to moment by moment. Eternal death. And God takes your breath away. And believe me, the fittest of you, the youngest of you, strongest of you, God can remove you in a nanosecond from his world and take that breath from you which he put into you, which is his to give and his to take. No hope of glory, not with Christ in you. What, sir? You want to say, sir? No, sir, you need changing. You need to get born again, sir. You need to repent and believe the gospel. Them two fingers, that's what God will give you on the day of judgment. Christ in you, the hope of glory, friends. Sin in you is the pathway to death. Lest Jesus takes the sin out of you, takes the love of sin out of you. Lest Jesus circumcises your heart by the almighty power of the spirit of King Jesus. You gotta get Christ in you, but first of all, you gotta get the sin out of you. And believe me, that's no easy matter. You think it's a light thing? You think it's an easy thing? You think, well, I can be a common Christian, you know, if I please any moment of any day I choose. Not your choosing. Not you, you don't choose me, says Jesus. I choose you or maybe reject you. Yeah, not down to your choice. It's Jesus who does the choosing, not you. Well, you think it's an easy thing? All you got to do is maybe just say a little bitty prayer. I'm sorry, Jesus. You know, and as you fixed up, you're on your way to heaven. No, friends, no. To get out of that sin nature of yours, I tell you, take some power. That takes some work, I tell you, and a work you're not fit for, a work that you don't even have the desire for, unless God gives it to you. So, you know, and to get out of that sin nature, well, you've got to get on your knees, you know. You've got to mean business. You know, you've got to pursue this, this new birth. You've got to pursue it the way that some of you have pursued your sin, you know? You think nothing of crossing the Atlantic Ocean to commit adultery. No cost is too much, no effort is too much, you know? Any cost at all, you know, to gratify the lust of your sinful nature. Yeah, a burning, burning, burning lust in you that's got to be gratified. No matter what, no matter who it costs or what it costs, no matter it breaks 
somebody's marriage, no matter it ruins the lives of children, you've got to gratify those lusts, evil lusts in you. Until that is, you get Christ in you. So to get that out of you, believe me, to get that sin muck out of you, you got to labor at it. you got to get on your knees and you got to cry out to Almighty God until Christ is born in you. And he takes the sin. He comes in and he kicks the sin out. Yeah? He comes in and he kicks the sin out. But only he's powerful enough. Only he's strong enough. I tell you to get that sin out of you. You're not strong enough. I mean, here you are. Eh? Here you are. I mean, what, what sinful habit can you give up in yourself? Eh? How often have you tried? How often have you struggled? Eh? To no avail. You can't overcome one single sin. Never mind your whole sinful nature by yourself. Why Jesus had to come. Why Jesus had to live that blameless, spotless life. Why Jesus had to die on a cross. You see, there's power. There's wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb, in the blood of Jesus. Oh, I tell you, there's such power there. Power to cancel, power to break, power to destroy sin. Power to, to erase sin, to delete it from the entirety of your being. To blot it out so that God remembers it no more. To bury it in the deepest ocean so that God himself cannot find it. But only at the cross. It's only there. You ask any man, woman, who's a true reborn Christian, you ask them where it began for them. They'll tell you maybe different ways, you know, maybe different experiences. But it all comes down to the same thing in the end. On their knees before the cross of Jesus, pleading for mercy. God be merciful to me, a sinner. And here you are. You got the hope of heaven in you. You think you're going to go to heaven. You haven't got Christ in you. And you haven't even got the desire to be rid of your sin. How's that going to happen? Huh? It's not. It's not. But I'm here today to tell you these things. Why? We're here to tell you these things today because we love you. Because I don't want you to waken up one morning in hell. You know? You go to bed, you know, at night, and uh, you assume that you're going to wake up in the morning. You're going to do this, you're going to do that, you're going to do the other. You've got this appointment, that appointment. And it never crosses your mind that maybe, perhaps, you won't wake it up in the morning. Well, you're waking up, but in hell. In hell instead of heaven. Friends, Jesus spoke more about hell than he ever did about heaven. And he speaks about it so graphically, so fearfully, awesomely, graphically, and clearly, gnashing of teeth, darkness, no end to it for all eternity. That's Jesus. That's the one who loved sinners and gave himself for them, died for them and rose again from the dead for them, that they might avoid such an end, such a place, that they might have the hope of glory in them. But not until Christ is born in you. Not until Christ is formed in you. I don't mean until you become religious. Being religious is not the hope of glory. Being a Roman Catholic is not the hope of glory. Being a Muslim is not the hope of glory. Being a Buddhist is not the hope of glory. Christ in you is the hope of glory. The only hope of glory. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. No, other, no one else under, under the whole canopy of heaven. 
I wish a person can be saved. One name, one name only, Jesus, Christ in you, the Savior, the Messiah, the one who was to come and came and did the business, did all that was necessary, cried from the cross, it is finished, done. He did the work. His work, not yours, not mine, because there's nothing that you and nothing that I can do to get Christ in you and to give you this hope of glory, only that which Christ Jesus himself has done. Christ Jesus, the Bible tells us, came into the world not to make men religious, but to save sinners, to rescue them from a sure and certain danger and to deliver them from the wrath to come. The present, yes, even the present wrath <laughs> revealed, being revealed against you as a result of your ungodliness and unrighteousness in suppressing the truth of the knowledge of God. See, friends, in order for that wrath in order for that holy displeasure of God to be removed from off you, hangs over you. The judgment, the sword of God's judgment, hangs over you like the sword of Damocles, waiting to fall upon you at any divinely appointed moment. What will take away your sin? What will take away the wrath of God from off you? What will remove the sword of God's justice from you? One thing only, the blood of God's Son, Jesus Christ, shed for sinners. It only answers to the blood. God sees the blood. God sees the blood, the angel of death, in the Old Testament, the Exodus. The going out of God's people from Egyptian bondage. The angel of death sees the blood and turns away. No judgment, no death. Without the blood, without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. Not at all. But God himself has provided the blood sacrifice. His own son. The Lamb of God, he calls in the New Testament. Lamb of God, he takes away the sin of the world. And he would take away your sin today. If that is, Christ was born in you. That is, if your nature was changed. That is, if the miracle of God's grace was performed in you. That is where you made a holy man or woman, without holiness no man shall see the Lord. Maybe that's why you ask the question, I can't see God, you say. Of course you can't, he's invisible. Pure in heart shall see God, blessed to the pure in heart. Maybe it's because of your impurity. Maybe that's the reason why you're always asking for evidence. Prove to me that God exists. You say, no. Are you talking about yourself, sir? Are you talking to yourself? Are you talking to yourself again, sir? Repent and believe the gospel, young man. Boy, you got the breath of life in you. Thank you, ma'am. So like I say, friends, you know, you got to be a change. The hope of glory, it belongs to those. You know, you ask for evidence, you know. And the answer is always the same. No, you don't need evidence. You know that God is. Not such a thing as an atheist in all the planet Earth. Not, not a single one. You all know that God is. He's made it known to you, plain to you, shown it to you. You even clearly understand, but you don't want him to exist because you got this corrupt nature in you. No? You got this bias away from God, this hatred of God. It's a nature in which you were born. 
And that's got to be fetched out of you. That's got to be taken out of you. That's got to be extracted from you. And only God himself has the power to do that. Only King Jesus can do it. Only he who died and rose again from the dead. Only he who is alive and alive forevermore. But that's, that's his business now. He hasn't finished working. He's still working. He's raining at the right... Sign of it, isn't you it? What? Well, maybe you can't see, madam, because uh, you're spiritually blind. Maybe your eyes need opening. And shaking your head won't change anything. And it certainly won't change your nature, madam. No. You see, friends, it's... Uh, it's the nature again, you see, it's the sin problem. It's the heart of the matter. It's the heart of the problem. That hatred, that inveterate hatred of God, you know? Ah, you, would, you would claw them out of heaven if you could. Ah, and you'd trample all over him. You'd crucify him again. In fact, that's what you do every time you hear the gospel. And every time you reject the gospel, you crucify the Son of God afresh all over again. Uh, the best man that ever lived, ever walked the face of this earth. And what did you do to him? You nailed him to a cross. You crucified him. You spat on him. And you scourged him and nailed him to a cross. And that's what you would do again because you hate him. You hate him. You love your sin and you hate Jesus Christ. And I tell you, only he can change that. Only he can change you. Only he can change your heart. And I tell you, I warn you, and love warns. Love warns. Your house is on fire. You're living in a city of destruction. It's going to go up in smoke. And you're going to go up with it unless you're born again. Unless Christ is born in you. No hope of glory. Christ in you is the hope of glory. So how do I get Christ into you? I can't do that. I'm just a minister of the gospel. I can't do that for you. I can only tell you. I can only point you in the right direction. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. I point you to him. But if you won't go, if you won't go, you're happy in your sin. You want to lather in your sin. You want to die in your sin. Like George, you know, you're for the damnation of hell. You're happy with that, you know, then, well, you carry on your sweet way. But you need to, you need to get a handle on what God, what Jesus says in the Bible about that. Because believe me, you do not want to go there. I hear young people telling me, oh yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great, that'd be wonderful. I'll be with my buddies and we'll be partying and fornicating and drunken, you know. Friends, you will not. You will not. You will be more lonely, despairing, tormenting than you ever possibly imagined that you could be. You do not want to go there. You want to go to heaven. And talking to you, the most of you, might be exceptions, that's your hope, that's your wish. But what's it based upon? Is it a concrete hope? Huh? You, get, you, you get people die, don't you? Some of your loved ones, you know, somebody in your family or a friend, you know, cocks the toes up and goes out of this world. And what do you say? I see it in your newspapers every day. R.I.P. Rest in peace. Uh, what do you base that hope on? 
Did they have the peace of God? Huh? Did they surrender to King Jesus? Did they repent of their sin? Did they believe in Jesus? Did they go to the cross? Were they born again? Because if they weren't, your R-I-P means nothing. Nothing. That's just an old Roman Catholic thing that means absolutely nothing. Friends, there is no peace for the wicked, says my God. No peace. Not in this life, nor in the life to come. Friends, death is not the end. It is appointed for men to die. Once after this comes the judgment. You stand before God face to face with the one that you've hated all your earthly existence. Hated and despised and trampled his law, his word and his son underfoot. And what do you think he will do to you? The hope of glory, not a hope, not a hope in hell. There is no hope in hell. That's why they conned that phrase. There is no hope in hell. Only in glory. Only in God. Only in heaven. Only at the right hand of the Father. Only in Jesus. Who so loved the world that he came and died and rose again from the dead that you might have this hope that he might be born in you. Christ in you. In you. Does Jesus Christ live in you? Not asking you, are you religious? Not asking you to go to church. Not asking you to read the Bible. Not asking you, do you profess to be a Christian? I'm asking you, do you have Christ in you? Have you been born again? Born again to eternal life. Born again by the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Do you have Christ in you? Because without that, without Him, there is no hope of glory. Nothing but the despairing, looking for expectancy of justice. God will judge you. God will judge this world. And He will judge this nation. And I tell you, above other nations, so much goodness, so much blessing been shown to it in, the, in days past. But now rejected the gospel. Now rejected the hope of glory. Because now rejected the Christ, the one who could be born in you and give you that hope of glory. Oh, dear friends, God will bring you to judgment. We are all of us, Bible says, naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Generation that deludes itself, thinks it can sin with impunity, no accountability to state, courts, police, teachers, parents, God, or anybody else. But believe me, ultimately, you are accountable and you will be held to account on that day. So I bid you to escape it, the wrath to come. Run from it. You say to where do I run? Into the arms of Jesus. Nowhere else. No other refuge, no other savior, no other deliverer, no one else with the power, no one else with the dynamite to blow you out of your sin nature and get a godly nature into you, a new nature, a new heart, make you a new person altogether who loves God loves holiness, loves the Word of God, and loves the Son of, Son of God. If you don't love Jesus, you're going to hell. Huh? 
One day you'll die. You reject the gospel. You reject Jesus. One day you'll die. And you'll go to lost eternity. But you received the gospel. You received the Son of God. You love and serve Jesus. One day you'll die, yes. But you'll go to heaven. You'll go to glory. Which will it be? Christ in you, the hope of glory. Repent and believe the gospel, Jesus says. That's the starting place. That's the kickoff. That's the beginning. That's the first line of obedience. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. The command of the king himself, Jesus. His first recorded words in the New Testament. Repent, Stafford. Repent and believe the gospel. Repent, young and old alike. Repent and believe the gospel. For the kingdom of God is at hand. And the only way that you can enter that kingdom is in the way of repentance and faith towards Jesus Christ, the Son of God, in whom you must be reborn in order to have that hope of glory. New Testament offered to you free of charge and without cost, obligation to you, you would like one. Feel free to come and ask for what? Read and see. Christ in you. The hope of glory. I, I am the way to that glory, says Jesus. The truth and the life. Friends, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You shall be saved. Repent and believe the gospel, Stafford. Like a copy of God's word. Feel free to come and ask for one. May God bless you and have mercy upon your precious, precious soul.